Welcome to SUSECON Digital 2022. My name is Dwayne Sims, and this is tutorial 1308, Installing SQL Server with SUSE Rancher. So let's take a look at our agenda for today. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, running Microsoft SQL Server in a container. Uh, we'll be looking how to deploy that via command line uh, the old way. Uh, we'll be looking at deploying it by a Helm chart in SUSE Rancher, which is the new way. Um, we'll be inspecting our deployment, uh, then connecting to SQL Server, and then we'll take a look at possible next steps. So again, my name is Dwayne Sims. I'm a sales engineer in Raleigh, North Carolina. I work in the Mid-Atlantic region uh, of the United States, and I've been with SUSE just a little over four years. Um, so let's take a look at the idea of actually running SQL Server in a container. And this has been a very long, strange trip. If you kind of go back to the beginning of SQL Server, which was in the late 1980s, um, SQL Server had been originally ported over from Sybase, which is the old Unix database. Um, so so uh, Sybase for Windows became a SQL Server. Um, and uh, it, it appeared on Windows NT and Windows Server later on um, and, and grew in stature over time. Uh, Sybase is still around, um, not as a company, but the, 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 the product is still around. It's called uh, uh, ASE uh, and is uh, an SAP product. Uh, so it is uh, still, still, still with us today. Um, but in 2017, SQL Server was released on Unix, on Linux. Uh, so it was it became available on Linux, kind of kind of made a round trip. Um, and around that same same time, uh, the idea of actually running SQL Server in a container came along, uh, because pretty much at that time, um, all, almost all containers were running Linux. And so uh, even though today you could you could actually do this in Windows, probably. Um, we still see it mostly running um, in containers as a Linux container. So SQL Server is still a very popular database. Um, over the last 10 years, it's been either, uh, it's been in the top three all that time and last for the last two years has been number one in market share. Um, this is a marketplace that's broken up quite a bit. And you can see there's still a lot of players out there, but uh, they do have the number one market share. So still a very important product and, and still very important in, in most enterprises. So let's take a look at what this looks like when you can deploy it via command line with kubectl commands. So my first encounter with actually running SQL Server as a container uh, was in 2018. I, I attended a, um, uh, an expert days. Uh, and I saw this, this is right after I became an employee of SUSE, and I saw this done as a demo, and I was intrigued because it was the easiest installation of SQL Server I had ever seen. Uh, basically, it was a one-line command to get it up and running. You basically did a kubectl apply, um, assuming you had the right YAML file, of course, and so it was a very simple process to get it up and running. Um, this is a copy of that very first YAML file that I got a hold of because I wanted to try this myself once I got back to my home office. I, I wanted to give this a shot. And so I actually, displaying this YAML file here, uh, I've seen many versions of this thing because this, this YAML file actually uh, specifies what storage you're going to be using. It specifies how you're going to uh, mount the, uh, the, the storage and where things are going to wind up the name of the database, um, your password for the administrator, um, all these kinds of things. And then also the networking piece is also a very important part of it. You'll see down there at the bottom when we actually specify a service. So we're actually, when we deploy this YAML file, we're actually specifying all these pieces that SQL Server needs. So um, were there issues with the YAML method? Absolutely, there were issues with the YAML method. Um, uh, networking and, and storage both were, were a pain to set up, and, it, and it, it became painful because the configuration of Kubernetes you were installing on might be different in each case. So um, especially for us sales engineers that were actually trying to do this as demos, um, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the SQL or the uh, Kubernetes that you actually were, were working with could be different in, in, in various cases. And so um, you would have to tweak your YAML file to, to work with the, the Kubernetes you were working with that day. 
Um, Kubernetes updates also created a lot of havoc um, with, the, with the AML file, and you would have to go back in and find a better working version for the newest version of Kubernetes. Um, so that was, that was also a little painful. And then also just keeping track of the best working AML file. Um, because there were a number of us out here modifying it. I actually modified the file at one point to add uh, NFS storage to the process because I found that was the easiest for me. And so there, there were versions of this YAML file floating around amongst the, uh, the folks that were using it. And it was just a, it was kind of a painful process to keep track of all of this. So I got an idea a while back that, boy, this would be nice. And this was after after Sousa and Rancher had, had merged. Uh, um, I got this idea that, boy, this would be really nice to be able to deploy SQL Server via uh, Rancher uh, so that we could actually use Sousa Rancher to do the deployment via Helm chart. And if you've ever seen in the marketplace um, that how easy that is to do with various applications or extensions to Rancher, uh, I, my, my thoughts went to, boy, that would be kind of cool if we could make that work that way. And so we did do that. Actually, we have a really super easy process now to, to, to deploy uh, SQL Server. Um, Bastian Hoffman, who uh, came over from Rancher, uh, helped build this chart. He actually did 99% of the work on it, um, and, and I've done almost nothing. So I give him all of the credit. Um, but Bastian came up with a great uh, Helm chart for us to be able to, to use with Rancher. Uh, and it's now hosted on rancher.github.io slash rodeo. Um, and I'll show you in a little bit how you can add that to your Rancher uh, so that you can pull it in easily. And so now we can go to the apps and marketplace section of the, of the Rancher UI and deploy SQL Server very easily. So let's go take a look at how all this works. So let's go over here to Rancher and log in. Now this, this Rancher is actually running here in my home office and all these Kubernetes clusters are actually running in, in my home office. So um, this is kind of a self-contained demo here, but I've got other Ranchers that are going out to clouds and various places. But uh, uh, for right now, I'll just kind of stick to uh, what we're doing in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to deploy this on to a RKE cluster that's running on a bunch of virtual machines on this server called Falcon. Um, and you can see here, this is RKE1. This is version 1.19.16. So I've had this up for a while, over a year. Um, and so uh, th this is my uh, one of my go-to clusters um, that I use for a lot of a lot of the work that I that I that I have going on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Apps and Marketplace first, and the very first thing I'm going to go look at is my repositories. Now, um, as I mentioned in the slides, um, I have already added this re repository to Rancher. Um, so this is uh, rancher.github.io slash rodeo, and I've actually named it rodeo. So when I actually go up here and look at the charts, so I've got a bunch of different repositories here for, for pulling Helm charts. But when I go, go up here and I actually look at the charts, uh, I can see if I look under this Rodeo um, repository, I can see all the things that are out there. And there's a number of there's a number of interesting things that are out here um, that that you can mess with. But this one here is the one that we're really after, which is the SQL Server um, uh, uh, Helm chart. So I'm going to go ahead and click um, on that, and I'll go ahead and just jump right into the install. Here I can actually pick what namespace that I want to deploy this in. So I can click web and then I can give it a name. I'm going to use Balmer as the name of my uh, um, my database. I'll click next. And then I go through and, and change my settings uh, that I might want it to. In my case, I'm going to change the password uh, to something else. I'm going to go down here to service settings. Now for my deployment, node port makes the most sense um, for the way that I've got things running here. Uh, load balancer might make more sense in some situations, um, but um, for for me and the way the things are running here in my home in my home lab, um, node port is is the right way to go. Um, here you would actually be accepting your licensing, um, and so that that's uh, that's all clear. You've accepted the, uh, the the EULA, and it won't install until you do that. So you have to accept that, and then. You can pick what version of SQL Server you want to deploy. Now, I, I always use developer. I think you can use enterprise and express, 
there's a couple of other ones can be chosen as well. Um, and then storage settings. Storage, I'm going to I'm going to click here. I'm going to say I want to specify storage exactly. So if I was building something for um, that I was going to be doing a lot of work with, I would want to make these user databases bigger. I want to make might want to make my log uh, data my log volumes bigger. But I'm also going to say what storage class I'm going to use. And for me, I'm going to use NFS because I have an NFS server here in my home lab. And that's what I actually use. And I have this Kubernetes cluster actually hooked up. And the default storage class for the Kubernetes cluster is an NFS. Um, it's actually defined by NFS client. So I'm going to go ahead and click install. And it sort of goes off and does its thing now. And at this point, it's going to go out there and um, do the, the bits that it needs to do. And it is now installed SQL Server. And it, and it took, uh, looks like 13 seconds to, to do that. So um, that's a pretty easy install of SQL Server. Now, if I go back up here now and I see the installed apps, I've already see, I, I can see that the, that the Balmer app is already out there and, and running and spinning up. And so we, we, are, we are in pretty good shape. So now we're going to go back and we're going to inspect the deployment of SQL Server using the Rancher UI. So um, we'll, we'll kind of jump in here. Now, everything that I'm going to show you here, you could you could do this with with KubeKettle. You could you could issue the UI, the the uh, command line commands, uh, pull all this stuff out, um, you know, get services, get storage. Um, you can you could pull all this information out from the command line, and you still can if you want to do it that way. But for folks that maybe are less inclined for the uh, command line, you can use the Rancher UI. So go, let's go take a look at the uh, the Rancher UI and pull some information out about our deployment. So here we are back in the Rancher UI, and you can uh, dig down into the deployment and see what all was created with it. And you can see we have services, we have some persistent volume claims, there's a secret and config map. So you've got all these pieces that were actually pulled out, and you can and you can go and dig into those separately if you'd like to. You can also go down and look in under individual topics. So uh, I can go and see that I've got persistent volume claims uh, for this for this deployment and here i've got four of them that were created there's a two gig a five gig a two gig and a five gig um, there's one for the uh, uh the sql server data there's a temp database log log uh, file so i've got those and and then i can also go look at the, the volumes themselves so i can actually go and take a look at the persistent volumes and i can see exactly how their name so if I need to go out to my NFS server and look, I can go find those. I can see my, my persistent volume actually has a name out there. If I want to go and do backups on it or whatever I need to do, I have the ability to go do that. I also can go look at services. So um, I can go look at what, what services were actually created as part of this. And you'll see here there was another service that was already created that's laying there. But here's the Balmer MS SQL uh, service that was created as part of the deployment. And if you'll notice there, there is a, a port number 32299. That's going to be really important so that when, when we go to actually connect to the um, SQL Server database, that's the port we're actually going to use for that connection. So since we actually created this as a node port, we'll actually use that port to actually come in. So you can see there that we can actually go and inspect a lot of information about what we deployed and, and see that easily in the Rancher UI. So now let's go take a look at, at how we would connect to SQL Server. So now this can go in a lot of different directions. Um, and if you remember when I actually deployed this, I used uh, node port as my, as my as my service. And so that's the way I'm going to connect. That makes the most sense for my home lab. But if you were going to um, uh, to be connecting from another container inside the Kubernetes cluster, which I think would happen a lot, that would be a typical thing you would do. You could just use that internal IP address um, to, to actually do that connection on. Also, um, you can actually create a service IP if you need to um, and, and connect in that way. That's another way you could build an ingress. You, you, you could hit it with a load balancer in front of the cluster. Um, that's another way to connect to it. For me, I'm just going to use node port. I'm just going to pick one of the IP addresses of the cluster and actually come in that direction. I don't actually have a load balancer in front of this cluster. So that's the way we'll actually do it. I'm going to use Azure Data Studio. 
I find Azure Data Studio to be a really easy to use tool um, and gives me a way to actually dig into the, into, the, into the database so I can see what's going on. So let's go take a look. Okay, so now we're gonna use Azure Data Studio to connect up to our database. Um, I'm running Azure Data Studio on uh, OpenSUSE Leap, um, but you could run it on Mac, you could run it on Windows, whatever you want. Um, it's available for all the platforms. So let's go off there and, and actually do our connection to it. So again, I'm gonna to connect to one of the server nodes and I'm gonna do Falk, Falk RKE0 in my case. And then I have to give it that port number. If you remember from uh, when we were looking before, we, we had that port number that we saved and that's 32299. Now I, I need, need to uh, give it the username and password that I set up before. Um, that was uh, whatever I set in the Helm chart when I did the install. And if you'll remember, I did change that password. So I'm going to type that in. Hopefully I can get it right. Um, and I type one too many. RD, and I should connect right up. And there I am. I'm actually connected into my database. So that's kind of cool. Um, and and I can I can see the databases that are out here. I can see the system databases that are fine. I can do queries against the database, and that's kind of neat. Um, so let's let's actually just do that. We'll do a new query. Uh, one we can do is uh, select. Um, we're going to do select, and we're going to do at at version, and that's kind of fun. We can actually see, we'll run that query and we'll see there that we can uh, see what the version of, of SQL Server we're actually running here. Um, and I can stretch this out, and actually make it bigger so that I can see that I've, I've got that. And then it pops up there and gives you more information. I can, I can do other things as well. Um, I, could, I can run uh, other queries. Um, let's, let's do another new query. Um, I've got one in my paste buffer here. Let's go ahead and paste that one in. Um, and so now I'm actually going to go and pull out all the system databases. Um, and then I can do that. So if I have other databases, if I want to create databases, I can do it that way. Um, Azure Data Studio will let me do a lot of, uh, lot of uh, things uh, with my database. But I have a real working database here. It's, it, it's fine. If I needed to now hook it up to whatever application I'm building, I could do that. I've got a I've got a working target to work to uh, to use that's running in a Linux container. Well, so now let's go ahead and finish up. Let's take a look at what what are my next steps. What do I what else would I want to be able to do here? Well, one thing I would like to be able to do is create my own Helm chart with this and maybe make some other modifications to it. Um, there are is a really good website uh, in our documentation that actually. Uh, shows you how to create uh, these kind of apps, and there's the URL for that. Um, another thing that I want to be able to do is create my own custom uh, SQL Server container. And uh, I, I've actually found a couple of sites there that, that give you some information on how to do that. I haven't gone off and done this yet. Uh, it's on my list of things to do, um, but, I, but I have the, uh, the desire to actually go and build my own uh, SQL Server container. So I do want to go take a look at that as well. So, and you might, you may think of other things that you want to be able to do with this as, as well. But uh, I, I want to thank you for your time today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.